The equator, a geographer's line bisecting the Earth into two equal parts, separating north from south. It crosses the greatest stretch of primary rainforest, extends more than 20,000 nautical miles across open ocean, meeting the largest atoll and the widest river, the Amazon. Inaccessibility to these regions makes it the least visited, least appreciated feature on Earth. But for at least one man, that is about to change. This is the story of the quest to circumnavigate the globe along that capricious line we call the equator in the only way possible, unmotorized. This is the story of Latitude Zero. In 1997, Michael Horn set out alone to traverse the South American continent from coast to coast along the Amazon River. He succeeded. Many called him brave, crazy and wild, but now he has taken on what some are calling impossible. He is circumnavigating the globe at its most inhospitable point using his own power. Mike is a trained survival specialist and is blessed with relentless mental and physical stamina. But this latest goal is his longest and most ambitious. The goal of this expedition is to go around the world and meet up with my departure point. So you have to break up this big goal into smaller goals and each time you reach a small goal that motivates you to carry on and in fact to reach the, the ultimate goal and that's the starting position. Altitude along the equator varies between sea level and 5,000 meters. Because of the vast differences in the terrain and environment, he may suffer from malaria and hypothermia simultaneously. Mike will need to adapt fast to avoid delays and to meet his target of 18 months. To date, he is on schedule. If I go through swamplands, I don't move as fast as going through dry land. If the forest is really dense, I have to cut my way through it. That's quite important to adapt the speed and your energy uh, to the terrain that you actually go through. There's not a lot of dry land and then you want to sleep at night because you're a bit tired and then put up your hammock in the trees above the water but it doesn't work so you have to sleep on the canoe so you sleep on this canoe that's 80 centimeters wide or not even 80 centimeters wide all curled up on this bench and then you get the mosquitoes that come and they start eating you and, you... and then you get the rain that comes and the rain just <laughs> You're busy sleeping, emptying your canoe at the same time. And you just, <laughs> you just mission for two hours and you say, no, well, you better start, start rowing again. I rowed quite a lot uh, at night. But the problem is, at night you don't see the branches and they stick into your eyes and they stick into your face. And it's a bit, bit, bit dangerous. But uh, I've passed it. It's history. And now I'm eating luxuries. This is, this is luxuries. 
Luxuries are seldom on Mike's menu, and gathering his own food means he can avoid the unpredictable aspect of human contact. For Mike, despite the loneliness, prefers to be on his own. The human aspect is an aspect that gives me the biggest worry. When you give a gun to a person, like in Africa with all the war going on and things like that, it's not easy to go through that terrain. Animals, you know their habits, and um, they always stay the same. But people, dangerous. It's much more difficult to survive the concrete jungle than the, the Amazon jungle or the, the Congo, the jungle in Congo or Borneo. Mike's proven credibility as an adventure specialist, as well as the intrigue of this expedition, has touched the curiosity of millions. His passion and knowledge for the outdoors never fails to impress. Everybody's happy and uh, uh, all I have to do is do the expedition now, you know. Uh, this is the easy part, it's now the difficult part starts. The humidity, the animals, the, the mosquitoes, the insects and um, finding your path, going through the marshlands, over the tree trunks, under the tree trunks. Uh, yeah, well, it's part of the game. That's why nobody loves you. It's a uh, hostile country. Traversing the equator has its own unique challenges. The land is home to deadly insects, exotic animals and reptiles, viruses and disease. Even though Mike carries four kilograms of medicine, he cannot avoid the will of nature. Among his load of survival equipment, Mike carries an Argus warning beacon encoded with a series of messages, a solar charger, a video camera and a satellite phone. Even though I do carry a satellite phone, and I'm in contact, uh, loneliness really gets to me because I can't see the people, I can't touch the people. It's hard sometimes, it's hard to be, to be uh, at home and to, carry, to try and carry on a normal life, uh, being a mother with two kids, it's not always easy to have the father away from the house. But um, we just uh, think of him a lot, we talk of him a lot, we, we um, keep on continuing on our life as if he's still there. Nothing demonstrates Mike Horn's physical and mental adaptability better than his record. Having traveled the full length of the Amazon River in 1997, he now crosses the world's three great oceans, solo. Crossing the Atlantic from Africa to Brazil was really an amazing experience. A lot of people said that I would have no wind, but fortunately I had good conditions and I crossed in the world record time of 19 days. Food is easy to catch. I do carry a lot of provisions on my boat and sailing is, is, is a lot of fun. Once you were tethered, but now you are free. That was the river. When I go down this way and I see and it starts vibrating like this and then I reach the bottom of this hole and then it, and the water, you know, right in the front and I'm sitting at the back holding this thing. Is made a drink like this and then <laughs> through the bottom and back up and then I see the next one coming and then it's <laughs> you can choose a, a narrow life or you can choose a, a broad life and uh, where a lot of things happen I've uh, I've actually chosen the broad life although a lot of people say that I, I won't live long all the experience that I accumulate every day actually helps me to, to make this broad life as long as possible. 
you have to have an objective to carry on and the objective is to make it and at the end you don't want it to finish. Mike Horn's passionate adventures can be followed in a series of documentaries that began production in April 1999. Log on to his website on www.mikehorn.com to update his progress.